picture. This is a really important point, just finally here, Congressman, because as you suggest, when you talk about nearshoring, it's not just a matter of making it in the United States. It's also making sure we saw that with respect to personal protective equipment, where so much of it was made yeah. in, in China. We were surprised about that. And that's not necessarily the smartest move. Can you redirect trade so we are getting the so things we need from countries that we think are more likely to be aligned with us? Absolutely. There's a thing called the Quad, for example. The Quad is, uh, if I remember correctly, Australia, Japan, India, and the United States. And they've developed kind of this in a The following is a paid program. The opinions and views expressed do not reflect those of Bloomberg LP, its affiliates, or its employees. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public, private, and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. company that's focusing on empowering people by owning and maybe even making money off their own data. Um, so with me is the Chief Stratosphere Officer of Kylan, Dylan Dudney. Great to see you. Thank person. you. Yes, Thank you very much. Great to see you so too. So much. Um, so let's do an overview now that we're here um, of what Kylan is all about. Yeah, so Kylon is essentially, it's like a data blockchain. And what we're trying to do is give anyone the ability, uh, whether that's uh, companies or whether that's individuals, to be empowered over the uh, coordination, oper operationalization, and monetization of their own data. Okay, so what that means, just breaking it down to like a use case is, uh, for example, uh, and I talk. I think I've talked about this with you yeah. before. We've done it on Zoom um, in the past, and I'm really happy. By the way, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> um, it's really cool. I'm yeah. glad COVID has you know died down a little bit, and we're able to be in person. Um, but uh, one of the examples that I talk about a lot, which is a really exciting use case of you know this D data world that Kylan imagines, is uh, is tokenizing your genome. And what that means is basically you could upload your genome. Um, researchers could access it for a fee. And that could be a business model that is a decentralized business model. And it's, it already exists right now. Um, so companies like 23andMe are selling on the back end your genomic information to researchers for quite a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I really love this idea, this use case, because what it does is it equalizes um, it equalizes people's value on a global scale. So whether I'm in Botswana or whether I'm you know, here in New York or Toronto or Beijing, my genomic data has like a base level of, of value that I could share. So I, I really think that, um, and what Kylan does is essentially it sits as an infrastructure for that data to be shared between entities in a decentralized way, a trustless way. Um, and that's that's what we're up to with Kylan. Okay, so and you know, and you and I have talked about like our, da our data is so out there, and so many companies are making money off of it. It does only seem fair that we should have a, a piece of that. And that's really what you're trying to to uh, make happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and and I think it's going to be it's going to be quick. Um, so there's this saying like. Uh, it happens, you know, it gradually and then all at once. Yeah. Um, that was true for DeFi, right? Where, you know, it was two or three years, people were even saying, like, where's DeFi? What's happening with DeFi? And then we had the DeFi summer. It happened all at once. I really do believe in it. Two or three years, this infrastructure is being laid down right now by companies like us and others uh, to some extent. But, you know, I think, I think we're one of the, the better ones. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm the most biased person you're going to talk to, by the way, <laughs> about Kylan. Um, but I think that, 
Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be put back into the hands of individuals, this relationship with their data. And once those first stories start coming out about um, people having these personal cat capitalizations by using these systems, right, and these networks like Kyla Network, um, the, the pressure on decentralizing data silos or unlock or, or having your data being something that you're not going to share and you're not going to give it out and you're, you're going to hook up with a decentralized um, data sharing network like, like Kylan, um, I think that that pressure is going to be enormous, right? Because you're going to be, it's like it was, as if people were giving out free hot dogs yeah. and then all the, and then you know you have your hot dogs and you're like I'm not going to give up I, yeah. this is worth something why would I just <laughs> give it to everybody for free right. it's like and that's that's the bargain that we've made in the internet we have had up till now because it has it's a half formed internet there's no value transfer layer blockchain allows a value transfer layer to be operational mm. Dylan thank yeah. you so much a pleasure yeah always a pleasure yeah. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ four medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and start at under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self-adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at myhearIQ.com. Panda is a utility token that says it helps users access DeFi with ease. So with me is the CEO, Adam Carlton, to explain exactly what Pink Panda is. Um, Adam, welcome. And I guess just tell me, what is Pink Panda? What makes it unique? Well, thank you, Jane. Uh, great to meet you here today. Uh, what is Pink Panda? What makes it unique? Well, so we're about a, let's see, we just passed 100 days old uh, from a token that we released. It's a uh, Binance Smart Chain token, so it is a cryptocurrency. And we are also a uh, registered uh, C, C Corp, Delaware C Corp. So we're a startup company that is building out a, uh, a wallet and a decentralized exchange um, for a mobile app. And we really believe that uh, we're something unique in the space where we're extremely uh, mobile focused. Um, we think we bring a lot of uh, value to the table from a user experience that you mentioned that with ease, that's really where we're heavily focused on is creating a, a very uh, user oriented experience um, with, a, with a focus on mass market adoption. Yeah, well, I took a look at your website. So it is very kind of easy to understand. It looks like it's, you know, got a good yet kind of friendly user user interface and so forth. So, um, so tell me a little bit about the name Pink Panda. Where did that come from? You know, we had built out the concept of what we wanted to do from a functional perspective and who we wanted to be. And I had a list of, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 different names. There are all these names out there that are just kind of crazy names. And, and I was like, well, we don't want to follow these dog or doge or Sheba or all these trends. Let's come up with something unique. And um, I don't even remember who said it, but someone said, well, we're, you know, we're interested in being charitable. We're interested in cancer charities and everyone likes pandas. What about pink panda? And it just immediately stuck. And then we had the logo done the next day and it was perfect. And, you know, so 80 or 90 names later, it just kind of popped out of our conversation. <laughs> well, yeah. it's definitely memorable. So, and, and you brought up charity. So that is kind of part of your mission, part of your business plan, right? Mm -hmm. So explain how that fits in. Sure. So, um, I mean, I, I have a, a history, right, with uh, cancer. My, my best friend passed uh, from cancer when I was when I was young. I lost my, my mother to cancer. And, 
And, you know, we wanted to give something back. And I think that's something that's kind of great that I've seen in other tokens um, in the, the crypto space, but some of them have been exclusively charitably focused. I thought it was great that we reserve a portion, right, of the value for future uh, donations as well as existing donations. So we've donated a couple of times to cancer charities. And and so really it's it's the more successful our more successful that we are, the, the more that we grow, we can contribute more to those cancer charities. So I think that's great. And you've only been around for 90 days. Is that right? I mean, you're yeah, yeah, okay. actually we just passed, uh, just passed a hundred days, but yeah. We okay. Started. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> and, um, you've already got more than 5,000 mobile downloads, or maybe that number has gone up too. So mm -hmm. how did you break through? Cause it is a very kind of crowded space right now. A lot of people getting into it. It's new technology. I mean, how did you break through and get attention with so many downloads? You know, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons that we've been successful at this point. I think one, we started just extremely community focused and people know that they understand like when you're community focused, they see what you're trying to build and they want to be a part of that. Um, also just uh, transparency and trustworthiness. You know, I remember when we first started, we had eight people on our channel, right? And I took the time to talk to each one of them. Um, and as it grew and grew and grew, I always made myself available to answer questions, to, you know, tell someone uh, what they, what I think about it, uh, you know, Hey, here's, here's my perspective on that. And we've tried to keep that engagement up as we've gone, but also like let the community kind of self-regulate and self-build too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd like to think that, you know, we, we have a, an amazing team that we, uh, you know, I have a background in consulting and tech, so um, very agile approach to our, our software development and, and just, uh, you know, uh, thankfully been hitting on all, all the right cylinders. Thank you so much, Adam, for joining us and telling us about Pink Panda. Thank you. Thanks for having me. $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ four medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and start at under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at myhearIQ.com. is a decentralized music streaming service that helps artists generate the revenue from their own works and probably as a founder Daryl Hillock would say the revenue that they deserve right so welcome Daryl good to meet you thanks Jane good to meet you too so, let's just start with overall what is Beatify Sure. Uh, Beatify is a fair trade music streaming platform. So it's very similar to Spotify, um, except we pay musicians better. So what we've done is we've taken kind of that Spotify model of uh, streaming music that people are familiar with, and we've decentralized it. So we've uh, created it uh, on a uh, smart contract, and we put it on the blockchain, and we've made it more efficient for people to use, and we've made it more efficient for musicians to use, so they get paid uh, more money for their streams. Okay, so more money, more efficient. Are any other reasons why musicians should look at you as another distribution uh, forum for them? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, aside from getting paid, you know, uh, five times more than a current legacy system, um, there's lots of reasons. I mean, it's more fun. It's more interactive. They can engage their fans in more creative ways. Um, we really are focused on uh, fair trade. So uh, this pays people more in the, than the legacy system in the United States, but it's also going to pay, pay people more around the world. So we got uh, people from Africa, we got people from Myanmar, uh, Vietnam, and 
uh, all sorts of different countries, and it actually enriches those people as well, right? Oh, interesting. And kind of a world global music kind of uh, tone to it, too. So it, it, now, how do you make money? Because you're giving them more. How, what's your business model? Yeah, great question. So uh, similar to the legacy uh, streaming models, we have a subscription-based uh, revenue program. So um, we get a lot of money from our advertising and as well from uh, subscriptions. But like a lot of uh, blockchain uh, projects in the crypto sphere, uh, a lot of it is holdings, like token holdings. So that's also a great way that artists and fans can generate revenue and as well as the company generates revenue that way. Okay, so interesting. So you brought the token, so it's called the song token. Token. Yes, ma'am. Right. So, how does that work? So, let's say I'm a musician, which you definitely not <laughs> music lover and appreciator, but definitely not a creator. How would how would a musician benefit from that? How do they get the token? How does all that work? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, musicians get the token by going to to uh, beatify.audio and signing up and uploading their music and then just encouraging their fans to go and listen. So, each uh, listen is worth one token. And from there, they can uh, stack their tokens, they can uh, stake them, they can uh, just hold them, they can do all sorts of things. They can sell them, uh, they're available for purchase on SushiSwap or on Coinsbit.io. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that people can uh, acquire the tokens. For musicians, it's really for streaming. So yeah. Thank you so much, Gerald. So interesting to hear about Beatify. Good luck. Missoula is a new personal finance app for kids from Rego Payments. And with me to explain a, a little bit more about how Missoula works, uh, we've got Dan Apter, uh, the chief of strategy, and also uh, Steve Kravitz, who is the chief of product. Um, so, Dan, um, what, let's just start. Give me an overview of Rego and Missoula, and then I, we're going to get a chance to see it, which will be exciting. So go ahead, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for having us back, Jane. Really excited um, to do a little demo. Um, so really quickly, Rego, uh, we're, a, we're a neo bank and privacy first platform. Our platform offers a number of applications in the commerce space, both in store and online. Um, we're currently addressing the family wallet virtual uh, card space. It's actually an $800 billion total addressable market, so quite sizable. Um, and we're serving about 70 million uh, U.S. kids and teens. So what makes Rego special is that uh, we have three patents in the area of privacy, PCI attribution, and identity management. And we're currently the only certified COPPA in GDPR mobile wallet out there. So we're going to, as Stephen's going to demo some of that today, these, uh, what we like to say, all the features of a mobile wallet that kids want, um, but we don't compromise on safety and security, which really parents deserve. Absolutely. And we talked last time, I have a 12 and a 14 year old and I am all about personal finance for the kids. So I think it's such a crucial skill that they learn. So, um, and Missoula is the app. So Steve, do you want to introduce us? You want to chat about it for a second and then show us the demo? I think the best thing, Jane, is to just go right into the app because that tells the story for the parents and, and the viewers up, out there. We like to show the parents what it is that their superpowers actually gives them the ability to do. So this, what I'm showing you right now is the parental home screen. So as a parent, you can come in here and see all of your children in your family. And one thing we've done also, Jane, is we've built the application for the non-nuclear family. Given that families are different today, 
that we can have step parents or guardians come in and also view and visualize what's going on with the child. Um, we've made that available for, like I said, that non-nuclear family that you want to give it, extend, you want to extend your superpowers to other people. So when you look at this screen, you see the children and we can drill into any child on at any different level. But what one of the things we wanted to show you was when you come in here, we give you a little guided tour of how to set up your app and what you need to do as a parent with your superpowers. And then one of the one of the really nice features of the app is the ability for parent to show their children responsibility and earn rewards for for good behavior. And you know, chores is one of those things that kind of drives and motivates children. And so if we can build a reward system that motivates the children and to do things that are good for them, but also teaches them fiscal responsibility, then we've done our job as a, as a financial app for the family. And so what you're seeing here is the ability to, to visualize what chores you've set up for your children in your feed here. And so when you go into that, you can see that you've assigned individual ones to the children and you can show that you've uh, given those chores to the, each of the children. So if you see on here, like the first one here is make your bed, you can see that you've assigned it to everybody in your family. As opposed to practice your instrument, maybe you only have one child doing instrument work and so you can assign it to that individual child. And when you drill into that, you can see what days of the week they're supposed to do those. And we've devised a really interesting way for kids to steal chores. So the parents set up chores and make them stealable, then other children in the family can go grab them and earn those rewards while the other kids are um, lazy are watching. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a really fabulous, uh, I, didn't say, I didn't want to say that. But I said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other areas that we feel really compelled to help families with is the motivation behind not just shopping and, and doing for themselves, but also doing good in the community. And so we've made it possible for uh, children and parents to set up any charity in the United States, over 300,000 charities, and they can assign them to their children's account. And then they can, re they can in short, in you know, find a way to motivate their children to give to those charities for whatever reasons they want. It could be a, it could be a reward system. It could be a matching system. It could be whatever you want it to be. But we give that ability. And we've also, in the next few weeks, we're going to be adding uh, over 50,000 churches, the largest churches in America, and synagogues. And so we'll have over 350, maybe close to 400,000 organizations, whether it be faith-based, or, or society or uh, social causes, health causes, kids can actually take some of their rewards or take some of their monies that they earn in, in um, allowance and turn that into a, a socially uh, responsible child. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us, Jane. Thank you for having us. Secure is a secure email system, and it comes to us from Globex Data, and the CEO, Alan Gahi, is here uh, to give us an update on Secure. And Alan, you have had quite a year so far. Bring us up to date on where Secure is in the company as well. Uh, thank you, Jane. Uh, thank you for watching us. Um, basically, uh, Globex Data, which is our public company traded under ticker Swiss F, uh, is the creator of an application called Secure, spelled S-E-K-U-R. We have an email and a messenger application. We also have an application called Secure Suite, which is for larger businesses. It's a document management, file share, password manager as well. We're 
we're actually doing a lot of upgrade on that one by Q1 of next year because we identified that now people are looking at securing and backing up the data in the cloud in companies that are not necessarily, you know, the Google and the Microsofts of the world, because those are obviously, you know, data mined all the time. So right now, what we're doing is we launched around mid July in the US with great success. We had an amazing quarter, very happy. We really feel strongly that we can deliver double digit growth every quarter over quarter for the next two, three, four, five years. So that's, that's big. And the email application uh, is actually interesting because we have certain feature. First of all, we host everything in Switzerland, which has the highest data privacy laws in the world. Uh, we have also our own platform. So we don't host on big tech like Amazon Web Service, Google, Microsoft, and all that. And we also don't use open source coding. So the, the service is extremely secure and very private because we don't data mine you. So Secure Messenger uh, is doing well. We're, on, we're improving some of the stuff because you can message someone that doesn't have Secure. Right now, if you email someone, but we're gonna add a chat by invite with text. So that's gonna be great. You can text anyone and say, hey, click here and you can chat with me. They don't need to buy the app. And the Secure email uh, is going through a revamp where we're gonna launch our email application in Q1. And that'll be a game changer because our application, our service, if you use webmail, you can use a, a service called Secure Send, which lets you send an email to anybody in the world uh, without anybody on the internet being able to fish and hack it. But unfortunately, people don't know how to configure their email all the time. They don't want to use webmail. So this email application is going to take us from zero to, to a million, really, because it's going to make it so easy. It's like downloading Gmail, but now you're going to download Secure Mail. Okay, so a lot. So I'm sure people they're listening to this and they're like, "That sounds really good," especially with all the hacks we've heard. What's the process for somebody to get on the secure email? So all they have to do is go to secure.com. That's s e k u r dot com. Go to pricing, and you have two two choices today. You have the messenger or the secure, which gives you the messenger as well. Interestingly enough, uh, we are launching email only probably in november and the application for it on your phone probably in january february so you'll have secure mail so go to secure buy it for 10 bucks a month or a hundred dollars a year we give a free trial once you register and everything then you can download on ios or android you go to secure communications and you can download the application and that's it. And we have a ton of video tutorial on our website. If you go to support a video tutorial, super easy to do. Thank you so much. I look forward to getting an update soon. Thank you, Jane. And thanks everyone for watching us. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions and views expressed do not reflect those of Bloomberg LP, its affiliates, or its employees. have always been a simple